Okay, good evening everyone. Um, I hope you're having a wonderful Friday. It's been a very, very interesting week right here in the clinic and also in Lagos in Nigeria. Okay, so I mean, um, Vinci Hair Clinic, like you all know, for those who don't know what we do right here, Vinci Hair Clinic is a hair restoration clinic. We're a global clinic and um, we have branches um, in different parts of the world we have branches in the united states we have branches in the uk branches in brazil in the dubai um, netherlands and we have in africa as well nigeria was the first clinic that we had and then we have branches in lagos here um, our lower road we have one in abuja and um, recently we opened one up in accra ghana so for every situation that you have concerning your hair, for problems that you have concerning your hair, you can always reach out to us and we will be ready to help you out. Right, so um, we're going to be starting a series and it's called the Confident You Live Video Series. And the aim of the clinic is to um, give you tips and points, you know, every week so that you can be able to develop or help or work on your beauty tips that can help to promote wellness uh tips that can help to promote a healthy appearance and this is what we're trying to put together for all our followers and all our listeners so every week um, on a friday like this if there's going to be a uh, difference in time just check on our page and we'll keep you updated as to what the time is going to be so keep it in mind every friday we're going to be having the confidence you live video series my name is Dr. Tsunde Adefe. I'm a hair transplant surgeon at Vinci Hair Clinic. And today I'm going to be bringing on board a very, very sound um, hair um, esthetician. He's a certified person and um, he's had so much experience. We've had uh, contact with him and we believe he's going to be able to give us lots of tips on how to have healthy, beautiful skin. Lots of people always think or want to know what they can do to have healthy, beautiful skin so we're going to be bringing someone on board who's going to be sharing with all of you his name is mr sams mr sams joseph we're going to be bringing him in shortly and he's going to be talking to everyone he's going to be sharing with you tips on how to develop a healthy skin all right so before we go into all of that i'm a nigerian and of course i cannot afford to turn my eye away from what is actually going on in our country right now right so um i'm dr tony bob vinci and indeed we are indeed part of um the entire protest we are against police brutality in nigeria we advocate for a country where our people can walk around and be safe a country where we can indeed have the police and the police is actually your friend you know it worries me when friends from uh, um, other countries want to come into nigeria you know some of our clients want to come into nigeria and they keep asking questions like is it safe is it safe i mean it's up to us to make it happen and i must tell you i'm proud with the way all the youths are conducting the protest um, it's a peaceful one it's a matured one we are not creating any scene you know we are just trying to make sure that our voice is heard so please to everyone who is out there who is protesting we want to say big kudos to you i've been in the clinic all week i wouldn't like to you i've not been able to go out but saturday is another day and i intend to join that protest so you all are doing a very good job and vinci hair clinic is saying we want an end to police brutality we are advocating for a safe nigeria so let's all join hands together and make nigeria great for you great for us great for our children great for everyone okay right so let's go back to the topic for today once again is vinci hair clinics um live video series is called the confident you live video series right so i'm gonna check right here in the chat i'm looking for mr samuels josephs if you're here just give me a thumbs up all right i can see you all hi mr ayo that's the ceo hi t 55 is always here on our series nice to see you here uh, Judith Elias 93 nice to see you let's see all right I can see clinic the aesthetic I believe that is mr. Sam Joseph's clinic so let's see I'm gonna be bringing him on board and let's 
Let's start it. All right. I'm waiting for Mr. Sam. Let's see, let's see. Hello, Mr. Sam Joseph. Hi. Hello, Doctor. Good evening. Good evening. You know, I've actually been on your page and I've seen the wonderful stuff that you've been doing. And I'm like, wow, this is a great Nigerian over here. You know, so yeah. kudos, kudos. I know you've had a busy week. You seem to still be in the clinic, actually, yeah, in your scrubs. Am, am I wrong? No, I actually just got home. I got home like um, probably um, maybe 10, 15 minutes back. Um, okay. I just. Oh, what's going on? I guess it's breaking down there. Hi. It's all right. Can you hear me? All right. I mean, yeah, I can hear you now. There was just a glitch to break. I can hear you now. All good. All good. Wow. What can we do? Net up, net up. We want a good Nigeria. We want an effective Nigeria. We want good network in Nigeria too. Okay, uh, Mr. Sams, you good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm back now. All right, everyone. Let me just do the introduction, all right? Let me blow the trumpet while you just stay back and listen. <laughs> okay, so everyone, our guest today is Mr. Sam Joseph. He's going to be sure he's He's a person who is very vast with aesthetic medicine. He's a skincare expert as well. And um, he's going to be sharing today with us tricks, actually, on how to maintain beautiful skin. All right? That glowing skin is what many people crave for, but the men and the women. And Mr. Sams is here. He's a person who is experienced in this field. And he's going to be sharing with us on how to maintain a good skin. So, Mr. Sams. Do you want to give us just an intro first and foremost about yourself? Talk to us about our clinic, and then we'll delve into the topic of today. Uh, okay. Hi, yeah. hello everybody. Good evening. Uh, my name is Samuel. Um, I am the aesthetics director at um, the study clinic Lagos, Nigeria. Um, first and foremost, I want to say that. Um, um, I don't want to um, um, overlook the fact that this period is um, um, such um, a different time in Nigeria, um, mm -hmm. owing to the whole um, protest and sensitization going on about mm -hmm. the whole um, police brutality and um, everything. And um, I want to say kudos to everybody who's been um, lending their voice to all of this. Uh, yeah. A very big kudos to all of you and um, to all of us, actually, because, I mean, we are all part of it. The clinic, we haven't been um, 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 doing um, Instagram as usual this week because of the whole um, 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 protest going on. So we've, in our own little way, we are talking about the protest and um, raising sensitization about police brutality in this part of the world. So kudos to everyone. Um, yeah. um, so back on track, um, talking about what I do. So I basically run the um, clinic. I do the, um, I'm, I'm, I'm an aesthetic practitioner at the clinic, basically an aesthetician at the clinic. So we treat, um, cases from um, hyperpigmentation to acne and um, um, and everything in between, you know. So, um, yeah, the clinic has been running for like three years now. And um, mm -hmm. we've got a branch in the headquarters here in Lagos. We have one in Ghana. We have in Montreal, in Canada. And um, mm -hmm. we have pop-ups in Abuja as well. So what else, okay. what else are we supposed to know about the clinic? So we have doctors, nurses, and estheticians um, at our clinic in Lagos. So mm -hmm. we have a, a, a broad team. We have a consultant dermatologist. We have a dermatologist. We have aesthetic practitioners, aesthetic nurse estheticians, estheticians, facialists. So we have a broad, a broad um a broad network of um, people Especially. as part of the clinic, yeah. All right, all right, that's good. 
So I, I was going to ask, um, so tell us, you know, um, which kind of cases, or tell us the common skin issues that Nigerians, you know, I'm particularly about Nigerians now because most of our viewers are Nigerians. Okay, we have guys in Ghana as well. You have a clinic, we have a clinic in Ghana. So what are the common skin problems that they usually have? Uh, uh, predominantly in this part of the world, and I mean mm. West Africa in general, the most common cases that you would see are um, acne and hyperpigmentation. Those are the most prevalent cases, skincare concerns that people mm. have, have hyperpigmentation and um, acne. Those are the major skin concerns that people mm. present mm. with um, at the clinic, yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, is there a way we can link it to maybe bad practices or is it, are we going to blame it on the weather? Is it going to be blamed on water we use, food we eat? I mean, how can you help us? Uh, we do need to know that, first of all, if we are going to talk about um, hyperpigmentation to start with, we do know that mm -hmm. um, hyperpigmentation is a fact of life. I mean, Everyone, I don't, I don't think I know anyone who doesn't have one form of hyperpigmentation or the other, because okay. especially black people, because of um, um, the way our skin is made up, we have very largely um, active melanocytes, and because our melanocytes are very active, uh, one of the problems that we tend to have is. Um, hyperpigmentation. So, because of the very active, um, very active, um, 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 very active melanocytes, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. And um, again, the nature of our climate, our weather, okay. our weather. So, basically, what is hyperpigmentation? Is excessive mm -hmm. production of melanin in the skin? Yeah, like excessive mm -hmm. production of melanin in the skin and our weather is designed in such a way, our climate is designed in such a way that it, um, um, the sun is excessive in these areas. The sunshine is quite excessive in these areas. And because we have very hyperactive melanocytes, very, we have a lot of melanocystic activity, mm -hmm. melanocyte activity, the skin goes into a protective mode okay. due to this, um, excessive sun, excessive okay. sun, UV rays, the UVA, mm -hmm. the UVBs, the skin goes into this protection mode, and this protection mode um, 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 comes with um, activation of the melanocytes, what we call um, um, melanogenesis. So melanogenesis mm -hmm. is um, the production of melanin, in the okay. cytoplasm of the melanocytes. And this is basically the response of your skin to exposure to sun. So um, hyperpigmentation is one of the main causes of hyperpigmentation is exposure to sunlight, yeah? Okay. Exposure to sun, the UV rays in the sun. So we, we do always advise people to reduce sun exposure all right. okay. Reduced sun exposure is the number one way, or controlled sun exposure is the number one way to reduce in hyperpigmentation. All right. So it's not as if um, um, hyperpigmentation has to do with food, not necessarily. Um, okay. Not necessarily. It's just, um, first of all, we need to realize that we are black skin people. So we do have very hyper active melanocytes, mm -hmm. very hyperactive melanocytes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Joseph, now you mentioned that, I mean, the very first thing that we need to try to do is protect our skin from the sun. Like, really, how do we protect our skin from the sun? Walking around here in Africa. <laughs> in how, 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 how do we well, protect the skin? Yeah, the, the, the first and most important one, well, not, not necessarily most important, the first and mm -hmm. the first way is, um, uh, um, conscious reduction of sun exposure, conscious reduction of sun exposure. So you go out to the mall, you meet a friend, mm -hmm. instead of standing outside to start gisting, walk to a shaded corner and have your distance, stand in the middle of the sun 
to do. You know, so we have to consciously reduce. There's something we call burn time. Burn time is basically how long it would take for the sun, all right, to start inducing the burn, burning sensation to the skin. And that is when we start getting the hyperpigmentation. And this is the UVBs that cause this. So which leads us to the second method of pre prevention is um, sunscreen. Sunscreen. Oh, okay. Sunscreen is one, um, it's become very controversial in the last couple of years because um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of controversy about sunscreen usage, different schools of thought. But the fact still remains that sunscreen is the principal, is the foundation of skincare. Proper sun protection is the foundation of skincare. So mm -hmm. while you need, while you can um, stay away from the sun, the sun cannot stay away from you, all right? <laughs> so as long as the sun is up, the UV rays, or I have the potentials of um, UVA in particular, okay. has the potential of finding you anywhere you are, as long as yeah. you know, open windows and all of that stuff. So even when you're indoors, we always advise people to wear sunscreen. All right. Okay. So sunscreen, the first one is protect, um, avoiding the sun. The second one is okay. sunscreen. The third one is protective clothing. If you take off your shirt or if you take off your clothes, especially mm -hmm. for the people listening, if you do take off your clothes, you discover that your chest, your tummy area, your thighs, and even the upper areas of your arm are usually a lot clearer, a lot less pigmented than the more yeah. exposed area. So sun, expo I mean, protective clothing, especially darker clothes like black. I love wearing black and brown because, I mean, <laughs> they are the the some some sort of like um um, um reduce UV intake by the skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so protective clothing would reduce your um exposure to the sun or reduce the amount of sunlight that um you're getting. So it's important to wear protective clothing as well. I think these are the major ways of pro um protecting yourself from the sun. Yeah. Okay. Sunscreen, avoidance, and protective clothing. Okay. Um, that's very, very educative, you know, because when you describe, I actually used to call it the T-shirt phenomenon because sometimes when I, when I go out in the sun and I, and I come back home, taking off my I see that, you know, that Cut, line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see that. I see that. So, I mean, thank you. You mentioned about the sunlight. You mentioned something about bond time, you know, but I mean, I just wanted to know if I were to, if I ever to be outside and I can't avoid staying outside, I have to just friend. What's the bond time? Is it 10 minutes, 20 minutes? I mean, what do you so this is, this is one of the con uh, controversial aspects of sunscreen. So when mm -hmm. you're using sunscreen, you're looking out for what we call SPF, sun protection factor, right? Okay. And SPF is the measure of bond time, which is basically how much protection you're getting from the UVBs. The UVBs okay. are the ones that cause the burning, the hyperpigmentation as well. So okay. um, usually, 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 we say that the minimum required SPF is SPF 30, right? Okay. 30, zero, SPF 30. That's the minimum requirement, but you can go as much as SPF 50. Okay. Anything above SPF 50 is not giving you as much protection as like if you're using SPF 90 or SPF 100, you're not getting really as much protection. Okay, so I'm think. not trying to interrupt you there, but when it says 30, does it mean 30 minutes or it just... So, that, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get to that part. I don't want... No. Come on, Mr. Sams. So it's all about the network. Yep, yep, yep. But I'm learning a lot, though. You know, I'm learning a lot. I thought sunscreens were things that were going to supposed to be used by the whites, actually. I didn't know black people had to use sunscreen teams, but Mr. Sams is telling us everything today. So uh, we missed that part. Oh, you're back. Yeah. <laughs> we missed, so, um, you know. I, I, I said, I don't want to put out wrong information out there, or I don't want to put out too much information out there as well. Yeah, so yeah. when we talk about burn time, burn time is basically how 
and like how long it takes for you to burn the sun. So for for different people, it's different. For some people, mm-hmm. on a normal day, it takes two hours for them to burn in the sun. So your mm-hmm. melanin, your melanin already has um, your melanin already has some sort of SPF to it. Yeah, okay. it mm-hmm. does have some protection from UVB, which is why we don't. I mean, black people don't are not very highly predisposed to skin cancer because the mm-hmm. sun is the primary source of skin cancer actually sun exposure mm-hmm. is the primary source of skin cancer but black mm-hmm. people is not very prevalent in blacks because we do have melanin that is shielding us from all of that mm-hmm. so why i don't want to say spf 30 will give you 30 minutes is because it varies it varies mm-hmm. and again when you apply your sunscreen because it's it's a cream right it's a cream mm-hmm. it's not it's not a it's not a sheet it's not a cloth it's not mm-hmm. it's a cream by the time you apply your spf um your spf of 30 now let's say mm-hmm. you apply you are you're required to apply about 5 ml of sunscreen by mm-hmm. the time you apply your 5 ml of sunscreen and you go out and you okay. let's say you meet somebody and you hug the person some of your sunscreen is going to wipe off yes or maybe you're in the car and you're waiting on traffic and you put your hand like this. Your sunscreen is definitely going to wipe off. You put your okay. hand on something, your sunscreen is going to wipe off. And after a couple of while, after after a while, okay. you don't have as as much as you put on at first. Okay. And, and which is why I can't tell you that putting your SPF 30 in the morning would give you 30 minutes of protection or 30 mm-hmm. hours of protection. Okay. Because if I give you the actual factors, you think you just need to put once a day and go, no. But it's very relative. It's very relative. Okay. So I can't tell you SPF 30 would give you 30 minutes of protection because your sunscreen can actually wipe off before 30 minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> which is why we generally say you need to touch up every two to three hours. All right. So, I mean, let's just put, let's put a, a big sign on this now. So, no, because I'm trying to get... You know, when you simplify things, then people can usually run with yes. information. Yes. So tell me, for the average Nigerian, under the Nigerian sun, okay, that one o'clock, two o'clock sun, how long do you think is safe for you to stay under the sun before you actually need to find a shelter? Well, if you're if you are wearing sunscreen, if you are wearing sunscreen, okay. forty five minutes an hour under the sun, you're good. You're still okay. good. If you're sweating, <laughs> if you're sweating, mm-hmm. 15 minutes, you started burning. Okay. 15 to 30 minutes, you started burning. If you're not sweating by 45, 45 minutes to an hour, you're good to go. Then you can. What if you're not, what if you're not wearing sunscreen at all? If you're not wearing sunscreen at all, I can't guarantee your safety. <laughs> I can't guarantee how long. I can't put any number to that. Come on, you maybe can't even stay five minutes under the sun. You can't say. Remember, I did say your 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 sun your skin already has an SPF already. Your dark okay. skin already has some sort of SPF shielding. It. So right. yeah, because of the melanin there. So melanin has some sort of sun protection to it, to it. All right. So you you got like ten fifteen minutes fifteen minutes tops without sunscreen. And okay. the effects of so remember this thing. Wow. What it means is that we all need to go get some sunscreens out there. Okay. And then we just have to wait for the net okay. All right, he's back. Sorry, someone someone keeps trying to call me and <laughs> No, it's just not, it's just not um so yeah. So where were we Sorry about that. Right? I got that. Um something else I'd just like to ask. So in your practice, you know, where you have skin issues, do you ever see people that um have skin issues that are related to hair? Because I can share with you because um I've referred lots of our clients to dermatologists. I've come to realize, of course, you know the hair is an it's a part of the skin, yes, the integumentary system, you know. So yes, um, there are some issues where I cannot treat the hair except the skin is healthy, you know. In such yeah. cases, I tell people, go see, go see a dermatologist. Some people come around and they have dandruff. You know, I refer them, go see the dermatologist. 
receive treatment and come back. So I think dandruff is the most common. Uh, common yeah, it's the most common scenario I see here in my practice. You know, when they keep coming, they complain of an itchy scalp. You know, and I can even I examine the hair, I can see right there at the bottom that there's this flaky appearance covering the skin, even at the base of the hair where it comes in contact with the skin. You can see this um, whitish uh, growth. Right? Oh, so yeah. I tell them you need to see a dermatologist first, and then clarify with dermatologist. Then we shall be able to talk about the hair. So for dandruff, you know, what are the ways they can prevent? All right, and what do you think they need to do just to make sure that things like this don't happen? Okay, I guess once again the network. But we're gonna wait because um, dandruff is really is, is a very important topic. Um, I see lots of them here in the hair clinic every day, and um, I encourage them to go see the dermatologist. Right? Um, if the, I guess oh oh oh, I think we lost him right there. Perhaps he's gonna come back very shortly. Okay, so um, I'll tell you dandruff basically you have that if you're a person who doesn't wash your skin very, very often, okay? If you pat your hair and you can see those flick, that flaky appearance, then it's a sign that you probably have dandruff and you might want to see a dermatologist. It's even common because um, most people don't wash their hair very often, okay? I mean, you can have a hairdo and you can be keeping the hairdo for like, I don't know, three weeks. And you actually see some people with their hands, they keep, Tap, 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 every time, you know, because it's itchy. All right, so it's probably a sign that you just have to go see a dermatologist because if the skin is suffering, very soon the hair is going to start suffering as well. Let me see whether I can get him back here with us. Um, where is he now? Uh, let's see if we can get him back. So I can't find him here. Find him. Well, let's check. So I can find, I can find. Perhaps we just have to attend to that situation over there. Okay. Uh, but anyway, that was Mr. Sam Joseph. Right. So he's shared a lot about sunscreen. He's shared a lot about um, how long you should expose your skin to the sun. So we've learned a lot. I really was even going to ask him some of the questions, you know, because right here there is the protest going on. We have one, especially in Lekki, and in the afternoon we have lots of people outside. I was going to ask him what points does he have for them, but I think he's made a few. First, you know that if you're going to be outside for a long time, you want to wear protective protective clothing, or you want to stay under the shelter, and then. Perhaps this is high time to invest in a very good uh, sunscreen. You can always reach him out to this clinic, send him some um, your DM, call them and ask for recommendations of the best one to get. So I told you, dandruff, if you have dandruff, I see that very often here in our clinic, there will be an issue with the hair. So, I mean, before I let you go, if he comes back, I'm going to add him up. If not, I'm just going to, let's see if I can get him back here. Clinic aesthetic. Let's just see if we can get him back here. What? Right, he's back. Hey, he's doc. Yeah, you're back. Sorry. I mean, I wasn't going to let you go because, I mean, you and I know that we have lots of guys out there who are protesting. Yeah. You know? So I was yeah. going to ask, I mean, what point do you want to give to them? Probably there's a message that we can give to uh, the organizers, the ones who are passing information down at the protest ground. Young people are out there. People are exposing their skin to the sun, right? Yeah. So, I mean, what can we do? What, can, what advice can we give to those people so that we can actually have a healthy protest? Yeah. So, first of all, um, what we are protesting for is more important than Kleskin. <laughs> all right. So, uh -huh. It's only those that are alive that are going to have clear skin. All right. So mm -hmm. um, the, the major point is, first of all, um, timing. Yeah. So timing. Yeah. So it should be done strategically where your okay. sunscreen, stay under the shade, you know, mm -hmm. and um, um, go with umbrellas. You know, you can take your umbrellas. 
That's a good one. That's yeah, a good one. Go on on wear your sun shades because uh, uh, wear your sun shades because that actually helps a lot, um, okay. especially with melasma. Okay. Uh, yeah. So wear your sunscreen. Touch up. Um, stay in the shade a little while. You know, okay. you can r- open the boot of your can stay under or something. <laughs> All right. Sure, sure. Hold up your umbrellas. You know, okay. hold up your umbrellas. Wear your shades. And okay. um, if you're out for two hours, three hours, you should. Yeah, baseball hats. I can't go out without a baseball hat, glasses. Okay. And you know the whole the full work. We, we were talking about um um dandruff here. Yeah? Yes, dandruff. Yeah. We'll we'll yes, yeah. how to prevent dandruff and how to treat it. Yeah. So first of all, um, dandruff is not actually about dry dry scalp because most people okay. usually um, mistake dandruff. In fact, the official name for what uh, you typically call for dandruff is seborrheic dermatitis, okay. seborrheic dermatitis. So it, it 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 might get very severe to the extent that you may need to see a dermatologist. I'm not a dermatologist. Um, we have a dermatologist okay. in clinic that attends okay. to stuff like that. But generally, we refer to that dandruff as seborrheic dermatitis. And okay. for seborrheic dermatitis, we um. It's basically your skin is quite oil. Your your skin is very oily to the point that the yeast okay. on your hair is feeding on it and sort of like causing an irritation, resulting okay. in the flakes and itching and all of that. All right. So, mm-hmm. uh, what 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 do we do? Sometimes we can, um, sometimes we do treat with um ketoconazole. Um, okay. We can give cold that, tap. That's an antifungal, yeah? Yes, that's an antifungal. Okay. okay. Just the shampoo, the shampoo to use. That, this is when your topical products can help. There are very okay. basic ones that a normal anti-dandruff shampoo can help take care of that. But when it really can't help, you do need to see a dermatologist. They may, need to, they may give you some antifungals. We can give... Um, Zinc, uh, zinc peridine, per- um, okay. um, selenium, um, okay. and you know medications like that, topical medications like that to use for that. Okay. Yeah, to use for that. But then, if you have, if you do have other um, underlying um, health concerns, they may be aggravating your chances of. Increasing your chances of having dandruff or gravity that you're dandruff mm-hmm. and all of that. So you do need to check all those factors. This is, a, this is the reason why we do consultations in clinic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that we can make sure we, we cover all grounds. Because if you mm-hmm. do have, if you have a, if you take for instance, if you're treating for hyperpigmentation and mm-hmm. you're taking, and it's not going, and you're taking a photosensitizing medication, Okay. You know, you're taking a photosensitizing medication. That's actually a waste of time because if we are treating you and you're still taking the medication, you still expose okay. yourself to the sun and even if you don't expose yourself to the sun, your photosensitizing medication is going to increase your sensitivity to the sun. So all of these things count when you're treating um um any con concerns, be it dandruff and mm-hmm. uh, Fun fact: I've, I have quite a couple of clients who had um, hair hair transplants at um, mm-hmm. your practice. Yeah, mm-hmm. a couple of clients actually, like three or four actually. That okay. are, that that are, and it's it's quite it's quite good. I mean, you guys do nice work. You guys do great great work with the whole mm-hmm. hair loss and stuff. Yeah, so mm-hmm. th- I think that's 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 a that's a place that's a point where. Um, I walk cross lines, crisscrosses Definitely. the whole mm-hmm. hair loss and and stuff because you guys do a lot of that as I see. Yeah. I so I mean, I mean, somebody will want to know because I mean, how do I know I have dandruff? What am I supposed to feel? Itchy scalp? You know, what are the common symptoms? So itchiness is one of them. The itching is one of them, but okay. most especially the 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 flaking those flakes. 
Okay. Those flaking, um, um, those flaking, um, yeah, the crust flaking yeah, yeah. out from your scalp when you eat. That is a very good sign of, okay. of dandruff. Sometimes we do see um, other signs, like when clients mm-hmm. come with seborrheic dermatitis, you can have mm-hmm. the crust as well around the eyebrows as well, mm-hmm. just around the eyebrows, and even sometimes behind the ears. And there are telltales, right? There are signs that um, let us know that, oh, this might be this. And in cases mm-hmm. where we're not very sure, you always do a biopsy. Okay. Biopsy, all right. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's a good one, you know, because people need to know, all right? We, we have inquiries that come in that way. And it's a good thing that I'm talking to you right now. And um, it means once we have some of these clients, we definitely we want to refer them to you so that you can help them treat the dandruff properly, you know? Yeah. And um, I, I'm wondering, you no, know, I believe definitely... We probably need to work together even more often. Perhaps you can sign up as an affiliate, you know, where I can, my clients can benefit from your services. I have lots of people who have hair loss issues and they have dandruff at the same time. So I think during yeah. the course of next week, I'm going to ask the business development manager to be in contact with you. So, I mean, we can exchange contacts and at least we can serve our Definitely. clients. I mean, from everything Definitely. you said, there's one thing that I like to tell people, if they're thinking of giving something to, People who are protesting out there, umbrellas should be on your top list. Baseball caps should be on your top list. I'm not going to ask people to go buy um, sunscreens because I believe they need a prescription from you because they might just go. Well, well you don't. You don't exactly need a prescription to get a sunscreen. You can get OTC ones there over the counter sunscreen. Okay. And then water as well. You know, water as well. We. I, I think I, I forgot to men- mention that. What it's so important. It's too too important. Uh, water mm-hmm. to drink up, stay hydrated, you know, and avoid um, drying out your skin and your system in general. Water is okay. so important if you're going out in the sun or if you're going for um, what's it called a protest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, um, thank you for your time. I don't actually want to take so much. And people are actually here. They listen to what you have to say. And I've seen lots of comments. People saying it's been a very. They're learning a lot. Um, they've learned the, about dandruff and they've learned about the signs and um, they know that when it's that time, they probably have to see someone from your clinic, all right? And also they've learned about the sun, sunburn, yeah. they've learned that if you, yeah. stay long, if you have to gist outside, why don't you gist under the shade, all right? Yes, and for everyone who is out there fighting for a just cause, we've also learned that we need to, at the same time, uh, stay hydrated, the very first thing, and also if you want to give, if you want to go out, go out with your umbrella. If you want to give uh, something to support the protests, you should be thinking of an umbrella, thinking of baseball caps. All of this will help. So, uh, Mr. Samuel, um, what, what somebody wants to know about acne? Can we just do that in one minute? In one minute. Yeah, acne, acne. Yeah, acne. First, what I always love to tell my clients whenever they. Um, Ask me about acne. First of all, acne does not have a cure. It is so important that we emphasize this. There is no cure to acne. Usually what we can do for acne is um, clear out the presentation on the skin and mm-hmm. put the person on um, a maintenance to reduce the um, chances of having um, for an outbreak, but is there any procedure you would do or any treatment you would take and you will never ever break out in your life again? No, there is no such treatment. <laughs> All right, so that's the number one thing. So basically, when we're treating acne, there are four major things we're considering, which are the four mm-hmm. factors that um, um, play a huge role in acne. The very first one is um, the hormones, the androgen hormones, the androgens. Mm-hmm. In fact, the androgens are the most important factor to consider when treating acne because the androgens are responsible for how much oil the skin is producing and it is only someone who is producing excessive oil that would have acne so the androgens are so important all right so first of all is the hormonal factor we consider that the second thing we consider is the rate and amount of sebum production sebum is the Mm -hmm. is the oil produced by the skin 
and this oil when produced in excess um, tends to create an ideal environment for bacteria proliferation. The third okay. factor is um, bacteria. All right. Now, okay. there is a natural bacteria that lives on the skin. Um, mm -hmm. This natural bacteria, we call it the propuni bacterium acne, P. acnes, for short. These P. acnes are the... Um, they are naturally living on your skin, so they are not foreign. They are not foreign bacteria, so they live mm -hmm. naturally on the skin. But the problem is this: when the other factors are already in place, when you have already um, excessive oil production, and mm -hmm. um, you get these bacteria trapped in the pores, right, from where the hair follicles come out from, then we get the proliferation. By proliferation, I mean I mean that they start to multiply and give birth to more. Now, mm -hmm. that multiplication of the bacteria and the whole congestion going on in the pore is what leads to the inflammation, the swelling, which is what we then call acne. Okay. Which is what we then call acne. Now, the fourth factor that is present for everyone that has acne is hyperkeratinization, which is basically build up of dead skin cells, like build up of dead skin cells. We have mm -hmm. skin cells piling up and piling up and piling up, you know. And that is the fourth factor that causes um, acting. So these are the four things to consider. Mm -hmm. Now, alternatively, not alternatively, in addition, there are lifestyle modifications that you need to make if mm -hmm. you are concerned with acting. First of all, your diet is important. Old school dermatologists will tell you that um, there is no relationship between what you eat and acne. But nowadays, we do know that um, we do know that certain food can be triggers for certain people, and mm -hmm. certain food can set a course of reaction that will trigger something, that will trigger something, that will trigger something, that will lead to acne. All right. So mm -hmm. the most common of them is your um, Dairy products, so you want to stay away from dairy products. You want to stay away from dairy products. You want to reduce refined sugar. You don't want to take a lot of refined sugar, processed food. You want to reduce your intake of that. Very important. Yes, I think those are the basic tips for acne. And again, lifestyle. So for most of the women that wear makeup, make sure to wash your brush as often as possible. Make sure not to sleep with your makeup for every moment you sleep with your makeup you they um you um you um set in motion comedogenic activities and acne stems from comedones so you mm -hmm. see those tiny tiny white and black heads that is mm -hmm. the root that's the basic root of acne that's where your acne comes from so the more white heads you're you're getting the more breakouts you're going to get all right so so that is that is basically this. That's the sequence. That means you can't sleep with that makeup. Don't you sleep with your makeup. <laughs> Always, it's a must. <laughs> it's a must. You remove your makeup. All right. Mm -hmm. Don't use the same brush over and over again. Mm -hmm. You know, don't the makeup brushes. In fact, when I see some makeup things, I can actually look at. I can see acne like. Someone said, someone said, I always have acne when I eat oily food, especially deep fried. So, the, the, like I said, refined, over refined food, food that are too refined can trigger something that will trigger something that will trigger something that will lead mm -hmm. to acne. So, you, you don't want that. You don't want to take a lot of mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, that's a very interesting one. Something that you mentioned, yeah. the makeup brush. Some people use one makeup brush for a very long time. For the rest of their lives, yes. So and they don't even wash it. What about those people who go to weddings and um, the same makeup brush you use at um, the last event, the previous event, you're still using that right now. So probably you all have to get a private makeup brush, you know. Yes, you need to. That's why you have a makeup brush, um, what they call it, pat. Pan, pan, pa palette, yes, pa palette, yes. So they have a palette. So they have like, yeah, they have like hundreds of brushes. Choose, choose. And brushes are cheap. Also, there's this, there's this thing. Uh, that's, there's this one that they used to pound, like, 
you know when you're doing when they're doing face beats the one they used to beat the face maybe it's called oh someone said it's called um i don't they're not writing the name but maybe it's the highlighter so much Bro, let's, remind not, me. let's not go deep into this because we don't <laughs> have a lot of tables you know but i believe the lady here and the men also have gotten the message and very yes, important they, guys they will actually work on changing their brushes or probably wash them oh it's called a blender somebody was going yes to beauty blender the one for mm -hmm. for the safe beats that mm -hmm. one most people do not wash it it's terrible it's terrible you know, they it's used like this that's <laughs> i have a lot of makeup friends so whenever i watch them and they are doing it i think okay. this is why it's called the face beats because they use it to beat the face so also wash that as well guys it's very important to wash that wow and well, then again yeah mm -hmm. don't use the same towel you use on your body for your face it's so important you can't use the same mm -hmm. towel on your body and on your face so you need to have a different towel for your face mm -hmm. than your body all right okay. great i mean i can see some more questions coming but you know typically we try to limit um the session to like 30 minutes you know it's a friday people have had a long week and it's good to give them this information and I'm sure probably some people still want to, you know, discuss mm -hmm. and chill with family. But yeah. I mean, you have been very wonderful, Samuel. You've taught me a lot. And Thank you, I'm gonna, doctor. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be going back to some friends. I'm gonna be calling some people right up, especially the issue with the brushes. Some people need to change their <laughs> They need to change that. I mean, thank you for discussions on acne. Yeah. And there, there's work. one. There's one question here. Like, it doesn't mm -hmm. actually like three times. Does laser hair removal cause acne? No, mm -hmm. it doesn't cause acne. No, it mm -hmm. doesn't cause acne. Okay. All right. So um, that's I am Millie, baby. You got your response. So the laser doesn't cause acne. I mean, if you still have more questions, um, can you just take your Instagram handle so they can probably send a DM? <laughs> I would not. I would not advise anyone to send a DM to us because that is very tricky. There's, there's yeah. so much all reply DM that we've been trying to reply. Stretch so how, can they, how can they get in touch with you? You can. Me? You can. You can. You can. We do these sessions that we call Ask the Doctor, Ask the Doctors, where we have doctors from our clinic answer questions, random questions. So you can just mm -hmm. send your question when we have any of that, or you can drop your question under any of our posts if you send a dm chances are we may not see it. that's the problem with dms there's just okay. so many of them all right but so you can send a dm as well yeah you your instagram it. handle so they can our it. instagram handle is at clinic the aesthetic that's c l mm -hmm. clinic as in c l i n c i okay did i spell that well d t h e and then aesthetic a e s t h e t i c it's actually up here somewhere so you can click on it and you would see our page you definitely see our page okay all right guys so that's dr samuel um, i'm gonna let him go now i'm sure he has some other things to do before the end of today thank you for your time i mean much thank you doctor thank you thank you thank you thank you okay. thank you so much guys for tuning in you're going to be hearing from us uh, probably next week, you know, to see how we can work together, right? Definitely, doctor. All right, Thank you so fun. much. Have a nice day. Bye bye. 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 All right, that was a very nice one from Dr. Samuel there. And um, we've come to the end. But before you go, definitely, I'm going to give you some hair care tips so that you can also add that to what you've learned today. The number one thing I'm going to talk about taking care of your hair is the commonest. Don't make tight hairstyles. Why? Because when you make tight hairstyles, the tight hairstyles could pull the hair off. And once it's uprooted, the hair is not going to grow again. That's distraction alopecia. Many people have that patch of hair loss around their edges. So be careful. Don't make tight hairstyles. Tell your hairdresser, tell your stylist that the hairstyle should not be tight. All right, in line with what Dr. Sam also talked about, you need to wash your hair as often as you can because the buildup of oil in there, the buildup of sebum can cause the bacteria to grow in there before you know it, you could be having dandruff. So you want to wash your hair as often as you can. Then also you need to take the right food, good protein. All right, if you feel you're not having the necessary nutrients for your hair, you might want to contact the clinic 
you can uh, give you a very good hair supplement that can complement what you have already been eating. Okay, and perhaps you should check the medications that you're using as well. Some of them could affect the hair in the negative way. And um, also, hair loss could be a sign of some disease. So if you're experiencing hair loss, one thing you can do is always send us a DM. You can reach us at Vinci Hair Nigeria or Vinci Hair Ghana. You can send us a DM and typically we'll respond to you like in about, I mean, less than 12 hours, we'll get back to you. Right, so we'll be waiting for your inquiries and I'd like to say thank you all for coming out. Thank you all um, for supporting us and it has been Vinci Hair Clinic talking to you and we've given you one of our Confident You Live video series. So thank you once again, everyone, and have a wonderful Friday evening. My name is Dr. Tunde Adefe, and hopefully we shall be seen next week once again in the Confident You Live video series. Who are we going to be bringing next? You might want to guess, but I'm not going to say anything. But all I'll say is we shall be seeing you again next week. Thank you very much, and it's been a very pleasant one. Have a nice evening, everyone. Bye.